in my life of limitless and cloudless hope you defied the gravity in me and give wings to my flightlessness so oh, Christ has set me free from negativity from impossibility Christ has set me free, all hope has been released, oh Christ has set me free. You have taught my future how to shine, all the colors are
Draw me in the tide of your will. Lead me as I yield myself to you. Hey everybody, welcome to church. We got about five minutes before the service starts, so here are some church appropriate dance moves you can do whenever the spirit moves you. So get on up and let's sweat to some scriptures. Or maybe not, or just, just let's go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Make sure it's on the face. See it on the face. Yeah. Bring it together. Here we go. Let it go. You take the stone, you let it go. You're unhindered by armor. Let that elbow sway. Elbow, 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 elbow. Okay. One of my personal favorites. Resurrection. You gotta get down to get back. Keep working, guys. Keep working. You're doing great. 
ハンディングそれでは今日のサポートをお願いします。Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, and I thank God. This one's a little bit of a, a newer one here, but uh,、um, sing, sing as, as you catch on.、Uh, feel free to sing and join us here this morning. Wonder. 
wandering into the night wanting a place to hide this weary soul this bag of bones I try with all my might but I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting a vagabond Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. You picked me up, you turned me around, and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart. You changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen, got no choice but to believe. Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can't just keep them moving No, you ain't welcome here From now, from now till I walk the streets of gold I'll sing of how you saved my soul This weary sun has found his way back home. You picked me up, you turned me around, and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. They lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. They lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Oh, they lost another one. I am free. I am times I lost another one I am free I am free I am free oh I lost another one I am free I am free you picked me up you turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground I thank the master I thank the savior because you healed my you changed my name forever free i'm not the same i thank the master i thank the savior i thank god amen, amen. Yeah. we had a great time with that one at <laughs> camp a few weeks ago the teen camp i was expecting some of those teens to come up here and Picked me up, turned me. I mean, we were we were going. So there were, those there dance, were dance moves, moves really could have worked. I think there were dance moves. There were for that dance one, moves. Right? We should have done them. So <laughs> anyway, it is uh, great to worship with you today. Uh, let's uh, continue to focus our uh, our thoughts and our our minds, our attention on God, uh, who He is, and what He is doing in our lives. That song is a song of testimony. Uh, we continue to uh, to to worship Him. Let's let's bow together and, and commit our day to Him, Father God. We do commit our lives to you today, and we thank you for this chance to worship in your 
your presence with your people. Uh, we love you, God, and we pray that what we sing and what we say would uh, be a sweet sound in your ears this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We've got some, some new, new and some old here today, and sometimes the old is new, too, and that's okay as well. Uh, but this is Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. We sing together. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is Thy health and salvation. All ye who hear, now to His temple draw near. Praise Him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord who o'er all things so wondrously reigneth. Shelters thee under his wings, yea, so gently sustaineth. Hast thou not seen Granted in what he ordaineth. Praise to the Lord who doth prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend. the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along, and you put me back together, and every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Sing together, oh, there's nothing. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Let's 
Let's sing that again. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing that's better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing.
be seated in just a moment. We're, uh, we're going to pray, but uh, today we want to especially pray specifically. Um, some of you know that uh, Tim Dentler has been struggling with uh, some health issues recently, and um, uh, Scripture says that uh, when we're sick, that we call the elders of the church together and we uh, anoint the sick person with oil and we lay our hands and pray on them and, uh, and the Lord uh, uh, puts his healing touch in, into that situation and we trust him for healing. And so uh, uh, we're going to do that in just a moment and just uh, um, uh, to, to let you know a little bit about what's going on, Tim, uh, that doctors found a, a mass in Tim's lung and uh, done some, some tests on that, did a biopsy. When he was uh, at the clinic for the biopsy, uh, he had a stroke. And um, so he's uh, getting much stronger after that and doing, doing well, but um, uh, recovering from that as well as then facing what, uh, what this uh, diagnosis is, which it's, it's lymphoma, and they're still finding out exactly what's, what's going on with, uh, with that. In order to... Uh, help Tim not to uh, overexert himself. We're not going to call him forward here and, uh, and, and uh, tackle him today, but um, we're gonna, I'm going to go back to where he is, right there on the aisle, if you've seen Tim, and uh, I will lay hands on him. Some of you, if you can, uh, would gather around and we can lay hands uh, together just on the, on the people around Tim, and we're going to pray for him today and uh, during our, our prayer time. So I encourage you to... Uh, as you feel led to join us as we, as we do that. Tim Dentler, I anoint you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Father God, we pray specifically for Tim today. Lord, you know the, uh, the, the feelings, the thoughts, the, <laughs> the worries, the fears, the, uh, the, the, the things that, that come up in, in diagnoses like this. Lord, we know that you are not a God of fear, but you are a God of, of love and a God of healing. And so we pray that you would bring your healing. Lord, we know that you can, you can touch the things that are going on in Tim's body in a second. And we, we believe that with all of our mind that you can do that with all of our hearts. We, we ask for that. We plead for that. Lord, in the, in the, in the waiting, in the process, as we're, as we're pleading for that, we pray for your peace and for your presence. We pray for, for your presence to uh, just uh, flow over Tim and, and Beth and, and their family, Lord. We pray for your, uh, your presence and, and your touch. We thank you as you have walked with them over these past weeks and as they have, they have faced tests and diagnoses and, and uh, wondering. And, and they're still wondering exactly what treatments will look like and all of those things, Lord. I just pray that you would bring your peace that passes all understanding to guard not only their hearts, but their minds. The, the, the feelings that they have and the, the, the wandering thoughts that can sometimes take us in places we don't need to go. Lord, I pray that you would encourage them, that you can bring your, your touch and your healing and your comfort and your grace. Lord, we, we entrust Tim to you now, knowing that you are the great physician and he is in the best hands possible. Lord, as we continue in prayer, we pray for each one gathered here today, and we pray that you would uh, bring your encouragement and your grace and your love in the circumstances that each of us face, the things that may seem overwhelming or daunting, uh, the, the, the highs and the lows, the, or maybe just the mediocre day-to-day of life. Lord, we pray that you would breathe your life and your grace and your presence into each one of our lives so that we can truly be uh, the, your hands and feet and voice in this world, that we can love the people around us and draw them to life with you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that you bring our way, and we thank you for the healing that you bring to each one of us. We offer ourselves to you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. I know that you'll want to uh, continue to express and uh, reach out to re- express your thoughts and uh, prayers to uh, Tim and Beth 
through this time, and uh, we'll be looking for, as we find out more about what all uh, this, uh, you know, there's probably some great casseroles coming your way, I guess is all I'm saying. Uh, so you've probably got some, uh, some good stuff uh, coming as we, uh, as we prepare to care for, uh, for them at this time. This is a family worship Sunday. Which means, all of you that would like, you can get some coloring, I mean children, uh, you've probably already gotten your coloring books. Uh, there, there's no uh, Hope Squadron, we have uh, uh, some fun stuff going on in here today, believe it or not, kids, uh, and you get to hang out with us. If you are visiting with us today, or if you've not yet filled out one of these Connect cards, we would love for you to do that. We want to connect with you, and help you to connect with God and with the church, and so uh, love for you to fill one of those out there in the pocket right there in front of you, and uh, there's a little box in the back that uh, receives all sorts of things. There's a slot in the top, and you can put anything in there. You can put uh, checks in there. You can put $100 bills in there. Uh, but if you're visiting with it, all we want you to do is put one of these in there. We'd uh, love for you to do that, and, and thank you in advance for, uh, for, for doing that. A couple of things to remind you about in the, uh, the life of the church. Not this week, but next week. So the, uh, the, the 12th is uh, Family Movie Night. We're going to show the, uh, the movie Family Camp if you can, uh, go online, and, and I think we've explained this, but just do it one more time. We have an agreement with the production company that we are a venue to show this movie. Uh, we have to uh, sell tickets online in order to do that and, and all the stuff. So you have to go online, and it's $10 for adults. Kids 12 and under are free. Teenagers, I guess you're an adult. There we go. Uh, but... Uh, but when you come then, uh, we will give you five bucks of your ten bucks back. So we'll give you half of that back. So movie night, five bucks a piece, free popcorn, snacks, drinks, all the things. Uh, Friday, August uh, um, 12th. And, uh, and if you can get registered for that uh, this week sometime, we've got to show them that we've got X number of tickets and, and, that the, and in order for that to all happen. So love for you to do that if you haven't uh, registered yet. And I know that several of you have. i uh, love for, uh, for more of you to do that uh, throughout this week uh, in advance of that. And then just uh, one other thing on the calendar coming up uh, uh, the third Sunday of uh, August is uh, picnic, church picnic, uh, right after church. Oh, Excuse me, right after church on that Sunday. So I uh, want you to, uh, uh, to be aware of that and to plan accordingly, and we'll have a great day uh, that day uh, for the church picnic. Well, we are uh, going to jump into the, uh, the, the message for the day. Let's, uh, let's watch, watch this as we, uh, as we prepare to do that. And, uh, well, I don't know, maybe I, we switched up. The, if you're planning ahead... Some of you probably aren't planning ahead, and you didn't read that last week when it said we're doing Psalm 51. We're actually going to do that next week, and today is Psalm 90. As we're walking through the, uh, the Psalms, let's watch this, and then we'll jump right into it. There's some right over there, and you don't know what a mixtape is, but uh, uh, if you want to hear the old technology, we've got some cassettes laying around here, and uh, basically, uh, I'll bring you up to speed if you're in, uh, maybe you're, you, you haven't been here, or you've missed a few Sundays, or maybe you're a kid in here and you're used to being somewhere else, so I want to kind of catch us all up today, and we're going to have a little bit of fun with the, uh, with the message today. Hopefully, uh, all of you will, uh, uh, will be, be jumping in. And following along, but just to catch everybody up, all summer long we've been flipping through uh, the uh, the most famous and ancient songbook of all times, the Book of Psalms. There are uh, 150 songs uh, in in this uh, in this uh, book, uh, the Book of Psalms. Uh, people have been reading them and singing them and praying them for about 3,000 years. Um, David uh, wrote a lot of them. A lot of them were written by by. Uh, 
David. Maybe you've heard that name, David. Uh, King David. Uh, he was also, uh, he was the same guy that was David and Goliath David. That's the same guy. Uh, the little stone and the sling and the giant and the, uh, all the things. Uh, he was also uh, a shepherd at one point. Um, he was also pretty artsy, uh, believe it or not. He played the harp. Uh, he sang and he wrote music, and so a lot of this songbook was written by David. I know I'm probably dating myself. Maybe, maybe you have one of these. Um, it's an analog Bible. It's not the digital version. Um, but um, if you take one of these and you open to the middle, you're probably hitting Psalms. There it is. Well, I've got a marker in it, so I guess I cheated. But um, So uh, if you're looking for, oh, what is this? And, and here's the other weird thing. Can we just, maybe we haven't addressed this, and I don't know how to address it, but um, it starts with a P, and we're not sure why. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's not psalms. We just call it psalms. Um, I could tell you all about when I was salty, the singing songbook all started with P. And that, that, that's a whole other story, um, and you don't care. But um, anyway, we're going to be uh, looking today at a psalm uh, that actually wasn't written by David. So most of them were written by David, David and Goliath David, King David, Shepherd Boy David. But most of them, uh, most of them were written by him. But, uh, but, but today we're flipping over to Psalm 90, uh, which it says right at the top there in Psalm 90. You see it up there behind me, uh, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. So this is, this is the little title underneath Psalm 90. It says, A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. Moses. So here's another uh, uh, great man of the Bible. Probably one of the most impressive men in history. Uh, Moses lived for 120 years. And most likely uh, he wrote Psalm 90 uh, at the end of his life. Reflecting back and, uh, and, and praying and singing this, uh, this, this psalm to God. Just to, I, I think it's good for us to, to remember who Moses was and what he did. It, Moses' story reads like a movie. Uh, several major t plot twists along the way. He's born into a, a Jewish home as a slave in Egypt at the time when uh, Jewish babies were supposed to be killed, right? And uh, he was miraculously saved by the king's daughter. I'm going to pause right here because I cannot help myself but tell one of the best dad jokes that I know that goes right along here. Who is one of the most, uh, most wise financial stewards in all of Scripture? Pharaoh's daughter. She went to the bank of the Nile and drew out a little profit. <laughs> Chris, I should have had you back here and we could have done the little, uh, little rim shot. So yes, Moses was that baby, the baby in the basket. Maybe you've seen the flannel graph or the video or, or whatever. And Moses, it, baby in the basket, floating in the river. Pharaoh's daughter, the king's daughter, comes and uh, uh, gets him, rescues him, uh, raises him as a prince in the king's palace. Uh, he's well-educated. He's widely read. He spoke multiple languages. He, he understood history and geography and philosophy and military strategy. He was, he was raised to be a king in the king's home. But Moses never forgot who he was, and, and, uh, and, and he, he still identified as a Jewish man uh, and identified with his fellow countrymen who were still slaves. When he was 40, young guy, 40, when he's 40, he, uh, he, he uh, decided he was going to take matters into his own hands and help these, uh, uh, the, his people, uh, the, the Hebrew people, and uh, he, he tried to do that to fight back against Egypt. His attempt didn't succeed. Uh, he was afraid for his life, and he ran away. And for the next 40 years, he lived uh, in the desert uh, as a shepherd, uh, raised a family, and uh, he's far, far away from Egypt. But then, when he was 80, young guy, 80, uh, when he was 80, the plot shifted again. And, uh, and here's where I'm going to need some help uh, in telling the story. We're going to do something we've done uh, a, a time or two before. Uh, it's called a spontaneous melodrama, and I'm going to need a few volunteers to help me, uh, help me act out what, uh, what, what happened with, with Moses and, uh, and, and how he got to where he was a guy that's going to write Psalm 90 and, and all those things. So, let's see. I'm going to need a Moses. Let's see. Anybody? Do I have any volunteers? Kyle, you're Moses. Come on up, Kyle. All right. Um, I'm going to need, oh, yeah, I'm going to need Moses' staff. Let's see. 
um, somebody has to play Moses' staff. Any, I don't see any hand. Oh, I see that hand right there. Come on up. I'm going to need some sheep. Let's, you guys, all the rest of you guys are sheep, okay? You guys are sheep. Um, maybe we should practice. Well, wait. And I also need, let's see. I'm going to need, hmm. Somebody's got to be the burning bush. So, um, I've, did you ever see the three amigos in the singing bush? This is what's coming to my mind right now. It, it shouldn't be, but that's what's, what's coming to my mind right now. Um, let's see here. Uh, let, hmm. David. I think, uh, I think David Applegate would be a good burning bush. So we're going we're gonna to put you right there. All right. So basically, what, you're going to be the staff. So you're just going to walk wherever he goes, you go. You're probably going to have your hand on his, on his, because you know what a staff is? Like the, like the walking stick. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and I think we're on, are we on the, we're, we're all in the camera shot. Okay. So those of you online, sorry we can't use you in this today because you're online and not here. Come back to us. We'd love to embarrass you like this. It'd be great. Um, so anyway, probably not the most effective uh, invitation. But anyway, uh, so okay. So when I read things, you're going to act them out. You're going to do what I say. You're going to say what I say. You're going to. We're just going to have a good time. But let me move this. I'll go off to the side. Why don't you guys go in the middle there? All right. Oh, and you guys, we should probably practice. So you guys do have a line a couple of times. Um, I'm going to feed it to you so you know in advance. Ba. <laughs> One, two, three. I, I think. I think. Okay. You might even have it memorized. That's good. Okay. Here we go. One day, you ready? One day, a shepherd named Moses was out tending his sheep. That's them. You're you're good. First. He would move his staff to the left. This is left over here. And all the sheep would lean to the left. Then then he would move his staff to the right. And all the sheep would lean to the right. Then he would do his favorite trick. He would put his staff straight above his head. Okay. Okay. The sheep would split down the middle and half would lean to the left and the other half would lean to the right. Okay, you can put it. Good. Okay, good. All right. God observed Moses and decided to speak to him from a bush. The bush said to him. Oh, wait. Oh, we should probably. You're going to need that, I think. And Moses, you might need this. So. Okay, sorry about that. All right. The bush said to him, Moses, 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 Moses turned to the sheep and said, I hear a voice. I hear a voice. The sheep in unison said, oh, you're ahead of me, said, bah. And Moses said, no, really. No, really. And the bush said, come here, Moses, and take off your shoes. Come here, Moses, take off your shoes. The sheep groaned. The staff plugged its nose. (laughs) Moses took off his shoes and walked over to the bush. The bush said, I've seen the people's misery. I have seen the people's misery. The way you part those sheep. The way you part those sheep. Moses hid his face in embarrassment. (laughs) The bush said, I've got plans for you, Moses. I've got plans for you, Moses. Moses said, Who am I that you should be talking to me? Who am I that you should be talking to me? Then he realized who he was talking to and said, Who are you that I should be talking to you? Who are you who should I be talking to you? And the bush said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses looked at the ugly bush and said, You're kidding. You're kidding. I don't know if ugly was in there or not. I just, I might have added that. I don't know. I think that just came up this morning. A little editorial, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, the bush caught fire, and waving its big flaming arms, it yelled in a booming voice, throw down your staff, Moses. Throw down your staff, Moses. Wait, 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 wait. 
Moses took his staff and gently threw it on the ground. Okay. <laughs> and the staff began slithering around like a snake. Oh, wow. It hissed at Moses. It hissed at the bush. It hissed at the sheep. The sheep said, Bah! Okay, uh, as the staff slithered around Moses, the bush said, Okay, Moses, pick up your staff. Okay, Moses, pick up your staff. Mo oh, 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 hang on. Moses gave the bush a puzzled look. But the bush said, No, really, pick it up. Really, pick it up. Scared half to death, Moses slowly reached out toward his staff, which was still hissing. And when he touched it, the staff immediately stopped hissing and stood tall and straight. The bush said, now go. Now go. I am sending you and your staff. I am sending you and your staff. To Pharaoh to free my people. To Pharaoh to free my people. Moses stuttered, but, but, but who am I that I should go? Who am I that I should go? The bush said, who am I that I should speak? Who am I that I should speak? And Moses said, good point. Good point. And he took his staff by the hand, waved goodbye to his sheep, and headed off to Egypt. Let's give them all a big round of applause. I need my shoes back on. Thank you very much. Yes, please put your shoes back on. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Yeah, that's... As long as it doesn't catch fire, we'll be, we'll be all right. Okay, thank you. So that's a little bit of the backstory. Maybe some of you have uh, heard that before. You know that. Uh, I think that's a great rendit. Maybe with a little poetic license. I don't think the bush was ugly by any stretch. So sorry, David. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Anyway. That is how God called Moses when he's 80 years old, right, to go back to Egypt and to lead the Jewish people out of slavery. And so that's just what he did. I mean, there's a lot in there, and Moses argued and all the things. We, we skipped over a lot of stuff, but, but finally Moses went back with his uh, brother Aaron, and they, they uh, uh, went back and led the people out of Egypt to the promised land. And the last 40 years of, of Moses' life, from the time he was 80 to the time he's 120, some of you think you're tired and old. You're not, uh, you're not leading a bunch of uh, people uh, through the wilderness at the age of 120, right? But uh, it, God did so much through Moses and his life. And again, we don't have any time to, to go through it. Just a few highlights here. Um, God was with them, the, with Moses and with the people. There was a pillar of, of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And wherever that, that uh, cloud and fire went, that's where the people went. And God was leading them. It was amazing. And, and uh, maybe you know the story of the Red Sea. I think we, now we know the, the backstory of how Moses already knew how to part things right and so uh, uh, he uh, the, the the Red Sea was parted they escaped the Egyptians uh, Moses gave uh, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai um, man a lot of different uh, uh, miracles throughout that uh, that story he gave them water out of a rock uh, God fed them with heavenly food called manna I uh, sent them meat uh, in the form of quail to, I mean over and over the, the children of Israel saw miracle after miracle and yet, if you know the story, you know they still complained and they still doubted. But God was faithful and Moses was faithful and he led them and he cared for them. He punished them at times. Uh, he complained to God about them at times. Uh, and over those 40 years, Moses wrote what we know as the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. He, he, he wrote those. Uh, um, but then after writing all that down over those 40 years and telling the stories of his people and God's relationship with them, it appears that he wrote one last page. It, it wasn't about Israel's history. It wasn't about the commandments or the law. It wasn't about the, the mighty acts of God or the miraculous wanderings. Moses' final piece of writing was a song, well, a, a prayer and a song, right? 
after all that he observed, all that he'd experienced, reflecting on uh, his amazing life with God, leading the people, he wrote this prayer that we know as Psalm 90. And so I want to read that today and, uh, and pull some truth out of that that still applies to our life as well. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust saying, return to dust, you mortals. A a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has gone by or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it's dry and withered. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. All our days pass away under your wrath. We finish our years with a moan. Our our days may come to 70 years or 80 if our strength endures, yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger. Your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? Have compassion on your servant. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we've seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Moses reminds us of, uh, of, of some key things that we need to know that, uh, that, that should change how we live. And the first, first thing right out of the gate, he reminds us that God is great. Moses started off like uh, virtually all the psalms that, that we've studied so far do. Uh, uh, he's reciting and proclaiming who God is, characteristics of God. Uh, God is, is, it's interesting to note that, that uh, uh, the, the things that, that Moses pulls out, the things that he points to, to, to point to God's greatness. First of all, he says that God is our home. Right, uh, our dwelling place. Uh, God is where we live. We've seen this in other psalms as well. Right, He's He's where we find rest. He's where we're protected. He's our dwelling place. Moses had dwelt with God uh, throughout his life, especially in those close interactions uh, with God as as he had led the people through through the wilderness. He was in the cloud and in the fire and in the tabernacle and on the mountain. No matter where they found themselves geographically, they were dwelling with God. God was dwelling with them he was their home he also points to the fact that god is our creator right before the mountains were born or you brought forth the whole earth uh, it, it changes how we live if we recognize that god created everything in, including us it, it gives us value and purpose right we didn't just happen but god created us on purpose for a purpose and moses recognized that god's greatness is reflected in his creation he also recognized that god is forever from everlasting to everlasting you are god moses recognized that god had always been and always will be he is eternal he started off this this uh, this this prayer song proclaiming that god is great but then uh, right on the heels of that he also proclaimed we are not we're not so great right in the next verses he uh, he highlights some of those things that tell how we are not we're weak and we're sinful and and we're not eternal right we are dust and we'll return to dust we've we've sinned and we deserve punishment we don't live forever in other words we're we're frail and fallen and finite we're we're we're, we're weak and we're sinful and we don't last forever and Moses, in his wisdom of 120 trips around the sun, knew that it was important to keep that perspective. Uh, God is great, and we are not. Whether living in palaces or in tents in the desert, Moses knew that God was greater, and he knew that we as humanity, we need him. And so the, the next part of, of Moses' prayer asks humbly, for God's teaching and wisdom. I, I love verse, verse 12. Again, uh, we've talked before about some of the, these psalms being things that we might put on the wall or put on a mug or on a t-shirt. Uh, this, this might be one of them or it might be a prayer that, 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 that we should be praying regularly. Maybe it's something you jot down and put on a sticky note next to your Bible or on the, the wall where you uh, read your Bible every day. And uh, uh, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. 
or in the New Living Translation, teach us to realize the brevity of life that we may grow in wisdom. Or the message, oh, teach us to live well. Teach us to live wisely and well. See, if God is great and we are not, then we have to rely on him and follow his wisdom, not our own. We have to ask for his help and his direction. He can see what we can't see. He knows what we don't know. Uh, Moses exhibited a, a, a key way that each one of us should live every day with the right perspective that God is great and we are not, so we must rely on him. Teach us to number our days, to, to use our time, our, our lives wisely in God's wisdom. We need him. With that perspective and in that context, uh, Moses continued to ask big things of God. Even, even at the end of his life as he's praying this prayer, he's, he, he's praying some, some pretty big prayers. Knowing that God could, could do all of it and more. And maybe that's something significant we need to learn from this psalm too. We need to pray big prayers. Sometimes we, uh, at another point in scripture it says we have not because we ask not, right? And, and so, so we need to be praying the big prayers, asking God for, for the things that only he can provide. There are, there are at least five things here toward the end of this psalm that Moses prayed that I think we should be praying to. Big prayer number one, uh, in verse 13, uh, Moses asked God to have compassion have compassion on your servants, he says. Again, we're frail, which means we're not strong. And, and we're finite, which means we don't last long. And we're fallen, which means we've done things that are wrong, right? We're, we're, we're not strong, we don't last uh, long, and we've done things that are wrong. And so we need God's compassion all the time. Well, how did... Moses know that God was compassionate. I mean, you, we read it there. You saw that there's a lot of time there that, that, that God was kind of, Moses was expressing to God, man, it feels like you're just, ah, you're, we got this and you're coming at us with that. And, we're, and I mean, it was well-deserved. And, uh, but, but Moses, how did Moses know that God was compassionate? He'd really, he'd really seen it for himself. Uh, he knew that, that we needed God's forgiveness and his compassion. He, he knew that, uh, that God punishes sin, and, and, and Moses wasn't shy in mentioning that throughout this psalm, but, but he also knew God intimately. He knew God's character. Uh, up on that mountain, when he was receiving the Ten Commandments from God, uh, God revealed his, himself and his character to Moses. In Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, it says, And he, meaning God, passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Moses prayed for God to show compassion because he knew that God was, in his very core, compassionate and gracious. He'd seen it firsthand because of that experience and, and many others like it over the years. Moses prayed for God's compassion. He also prayed, uh, big prayer number two, show your love and joy. Verse 14, satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad. God's love really makes all the difference, right? His love and compassion. Because he loves us, we can sing for joy. Uh, just like all those mornings in the wilderness when, when, uh, when the Hebrew people got up and were literally greeted with bread from heaven. Amazing. Uh, and and, and uh, because of that, or it, I'm sure that's in the back of Moses' mind as he's praying that God would continue to show his love and his provision and his faithfulness that would bring joy and gladness. I wonder if you're praying for God to show you how much he loves you. We, uh, we, we know that God loves us. Oh, yeah, God loves smile. God loves It's maybe one of those things that, that we know so much we don't really allow to sink in and, and, and change us. Pray for God to show you how much he loves you. Look for ways that he's showing his love to you. Moses prayed, show your love and joy. He also prayed... That God would make up for the pain of the past. Verse 15 says, make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many days as we've seen trouble. 
the Hebrew people had, had faced a lot of trouble, mostly due to their own rebellion, and, and they had experienced punishment and, and uh, consequences and trouble uh, because of those things. Moses was being so bold then to ask God to redeem the pain of their past and to bring joy and gladness in the days to come. All of us, all of us have a past that needs to be redeemed, right? It, it, it's an amazing thing when we come to realize that we have a God who is compassionate and loving and who has sent Jesus to bring that redemption to forgive and to heal and to redeem and to restore. As we commit our lives to following Jesus, he redeems our past. I believe uh, Jesus coming is, is part of the answer to Moses' prayer when he's, when he's praying that, uh, that, that uh, God would, would re- alleviate the pain of the past. Uh, Jesus is the answer to that. And, and so we have the, uh, the, the possibility of, uh, of being forgiven and cleansed and made new. Scripture says in, in, uh, in 2 Corinthians that, that, that when we come to God, he makes us a new creation. We die to that old life, that, that life of pain and misery, and we, we are raised to a new life in Christ he forgives us he works all things together for good we need to pray along with Moses for God to make up for the pain of our past Moses also prayed in verse 16 for God to uh, to let him see to, to let the people see how he's at work let us see how you're at work May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. Let's see you working, God. Because of our finite perspective, we can't see how God is working. I, that, that worship song, is it, is it Waymaker? Um, it, it says, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Uh, I, I think that's spot on, right? It's right on the nose. But we don't always see it. So we have to follow Moses' example and pray for God to help us see it. And even when we can't see it, we must know it and believe it. Uh, Moses says, may your deeds be known to your servants. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And then we come to Moses' final petition to God, uh, this God that he's followed for so many years. It's, it's a wonderful prayer, uh, a prayer of seeking God's blessing. Uh, the, the, the fifth prayer, the, the last one we're going to look at today It says, make something significant of my life. In verse 17, it says it this way. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. I probably don't need to ask for a show of hands this morning. Do you want God's favor on your life? I'm I'm thinking we would all all vote for that. I don't know, in the... If you uh, have a Bible with footnotes, probably the footnote uh, under the word favor, if you go down to the bottom, at least in my Bible, it, it, it says that, that that word can also be translated beauty. I, what a significant prayer. Uh, Moses is praying, may the beauty of God rest on us. Let's let that sink in for I mean, what if you prayed that prayer every morning? May, may God's beauty rest on me today. In every interaction that I have, may God, people see God's beauty in me. What I say, how I say it, my attitude, my reaction, my response, uh, uh, how I do my work. All, uh, what if we prayed that for the people in our lives? What if you prayed that for your spouse, that God, uh, God's beauty would be seen in them? What if you prayed that for your kids? Kids, what if you prayed that for your parents? Because sometimes parents... Uh, Get grouchy, right? No. We need to see God's beauty in our interaction. Pray that for your boss. Yeah, let's pray that for the, my boss, right? Pray that for your coworkers, even the ones that get on your nerves. What, but may the beauty of the Lord rest on us. And, and then Moses follows that sentiment up with, with a desire that his life, his work, his labor would matter. He says, establish the work of our hands. Uh, and it's repeated, which means that's, that's uh, the Psalms way of, of uh, uh, highlighting, circling, underlining. They repeat something in order to emphasize it and really hit it home. Establish the work of our hands. Yes, establish the work of our hands. It, was, it made it extremely important. When Moses came down to the end of his days, 
He wanted God to make something significant of his life. And I'm pretty sure that God answered that prayer. Moses is still hailed as one of the most important people in all of history. Uh, certainly in, the, in the, the Jewish and Christian communities, but literally in history. Uh, God has used him, used his life to make a difference. And I hope, I hope that you're praying that God will use your life to make a difference too. Now, you probably won't write several books of the Bible. You probably won't part an ocean or a flock of sheep. Maybe you'll part a flock of sheep, I don't know. But, but as I look around this room, as I think about the people who are part of this church, it's, it, it's an amazing thought to think what God can do, how God can impact this community, this world, just through the lives that are gathered here. Even the short people, even us old people, and all, all everybody in between. It, in a minute, we're going to disperse from here and we're going to go in all directions, right? We're going to go to our homes and our jobs and wherever else life takes us. This, you'll probably go to the fair this week, all the, all the things, right? What if you prayed that God would use what you do? how you work, how you spend your time, what you say for his glory so that his beauty would be seen in you. Rely on God to lead you, trusting that he is going to make a difference with your life. He, he will establish the work of your hands. He will, he will make it something solid and firm and steadfast that will last, that will make a difference. God wrote his story through Moses' life. What started in a basket on a river, continued to the palace, to the desert, to that crazy encounter with a burning bush that may or may not have looked like what we, whatever we did up here for a little while, right? But God used the exploits of that humble leader, Moses, to change history significantly. God wrote his story through Moses' life. And I am convinced that God wants to write his story, whatever part it is, to write his story through your life too. It starts with each of us acknowledging, as Moses did in this psalm, Psalm 90, God is great and we are not. And so we must rely on him. We must allow him to lead us. We must uh, call out for his compassion and his forgiveness, for his redemption and his direction and how great will it be when we look back over our lives as Moses was doing in this psalm and we see how God has established the work of our hands I, I hope that we can be praying together that the favor of the Lord our God would rest on us I've asked the worship team to come back up and lead us in that song that we started out with I'll move the burning bush um, and, um, and, and we're just going to celebrate what God has done and what he is doing and what he wants to do in our lives as we, as we disperse from here as his people. Uh, we, we might have a little bit of a clue of what God's going to do in our lives and, and, and the direction that it takes. And we, we know where, where we're at and, and our, our certain situation, but, but we have no idea what God is doing behind the scenes and how he's going to move and work and establish our lives for him. And so I hope that as we sing this song and as we thank God for what he has done in our lives, we can see that he has a, a bright future in store for each of us, that he can use us to make a difference in the life where he's placed us. Will you stand? Let's, uh, let's worship together. I thank God. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, 
And he told me that I was not alone. Oh, oh, oh. You picked me up, you turned me around, and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart and changed my name forever. The same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior. I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. Got no choice but to believe. My doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burden and bitterness, you can't just keep them moving. Oh, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. And you turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart and changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior. lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. Let's take that up. Hell lost. Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Oh, hell lost another Turn me around and place my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart, you changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Today. We thank you for this time that we can gather in your presence with your people. We thank you for uh, the, the, the story of Moses and the ways that you used him in so many dramatic ways. Lord, I pray that uh, whether it's dramatic or, or not, I pray that you would use each one of our lives, that you would write your story through us. And Lord, I pray that your favor, your beauty would rest upon us and that you would be obvious in, in our lives as we encounter others this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.